All right, let's watch the crack and welcome back to episode four of our classic Master League with Manchester United. Classic Manchester United, that is. And we have got a couple of details on our squad members and a couple of updates on those. I've decided to kind of go through and uh, just basically just kind of renew contracts for all the players that have pretty much got their contract up in 2020. So that will be the next summer transfer market. Hopefully we'll have promotion by then. But the way things are going at the moment, it's too early to tell in episode four with I think match day five, six and seven in this episode. So I'm just going through the transfer market there. Um, a couple of players on the listed players that I'll be looking at to, to scout and see to see if you guys want to sign anybody or if you want to keep things the same way um, until we get past the first season. But we do have a couple of potential nightmares ahead of us. As I mentioned in the last episode, um, we do have a very, very, very high salary um, for the players. So that's going to have to be something that we look into in an episode as well. But straight on to the action, we are up against Inter Milan in what I was expecting to be my toughest game so far. I mean, we have got a fairly good team, but Inter Milan pretty much have a player as good, if not better, in every position. Apart from, I would probably think, maybe a goalkeeper. Although saying that they do have um, they do have an excellent goalkeeper as well. So I'm going to give a rundown through the team that they are playing their starting eleven, And then I'll talk about a couple of changes to my squad for this match day as well. So they've got Toldo in goals. Cordoba, Walter Samuel, Cambiaso, Stankovic, Luis Suarez and of course Adriano up front. Ibrahimovic is playing on the right. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that they kind of like try spam it to Ibra and use his lack of pace against him really. Uh, but we have got Canton and Ronaldo up front. Goals, Best, Beckham, Keen, Giggs, Yapstam, Vidic and Ferdinand. So I've gone for a 3-5-2 in this game. 3-3-2-2 three, three, two, two formation to be precise. Um, hopefully it doesn't backfire on us but we're about to find out if it does or not. So straight away I was just kind of finding myself with a load of space in the middle of the pitch for some reason. I don't know if that was the new formation but Yapstam was playing as kind of a back three um, with the other two boys and... I just felt that I didn't have enough pace at the back to have this as a formation going forward. Win, lose or draw. I just felt kind of after this match, I was like, okay, like I do need to have Denny Irwin and Gary Neville on. That is my style of play is possession on the wings. But we did have serious amount of possession early doors. George Best, obviously in that little pocket hole uh, and just being able to spread it out to Giggs, spread it out to Ronaldo. And obviously we had Canton up front. Um, and as you can see here, literally this is just kind of a, a small sample size of the first half, really. Um, I was just controlling, absolutely bossing midfield. Roy Keane has a little shot in anger there, but on the left foot it was always going wide. But you can see here it's just wave after wave of attack. Look at the amount of possession I have, the amount of space through the middle. Cantona holds it up, swings it out to Giggsy. Giggsy uses his pace to get back, get past Zanetti, swings it across. It is come back to Giggs, but he is going to be in an offside position. So unfortunately, the Welsh Wizard does not get us on the score sheet. Uh, it is it is kind of frustrating sometimes when you're playing like a top, top team on Superstar. It can be very hard to break them down. You might have a load of space, but when you try to hit, you know hit that killer ball in, you just kind of find that they just slow you down and then they just kind of take the, the strength out of you or the stride out of you. Again, I don't know about that for a free uh, kick. You know, there didn't seem to be too much content there um, or contact, should I say, but the referee does have a stern word with Stanky. And we will be seeing him again later in this episode. But again, Ibrahimovic is getting a ball in here. It looks like it's going to no one. And then again, Schmeichel comes out. And to be honest with you, that probably should be a penalty. I mean, Schmeichel just came out and literally just dropped his feet. And kind of like sat down as if he was after doing something bold. I don't know what he was doing. He kind of took the legs out from underneath as well. But I could feel kind of the turning of the screw here. There was a lot of pressure being put on me from their wing play. Um, there was a couple of chances coming in here. And it was just wave after wave after a wave of attack um, from both of us from here. It was kind of pretty much balls to the wall. But this is where I found myself getting a lot of chances. Was surging through with these runs. Finesse shot there from George Best. We will be seeing more of those type shooting uh, animations as well. Because I do think that they are very overpowered in Master League. I'll be talking about that again halfway during the season. Um, because I have played on a couple of episodes into the, the future obviously as well. Uh, it just takes a bit of time to, to edit these. But um, yeah, I mean, it is it is kind of, there is definitely things that the AI really defend well against. And there's things that they're kind of really um, prone to, you know, not doing and not covering. And again, this is just me getting caught completely square at the back. Roy Keane is bundling backwards. That tree at the back has come back to haunt me there. Because what I've done is I've played Roy Keane as an anchorman, pretty much. And just kind of sat him back so that when I'm pushing forward in my advanced tactics, Keane is sliding in. 
but Stankovic just gets a little step on him. It's a beautiful true ball, and it's a first-time absolute zinger of a shot into the top corner. Nothing that Schmeichel could do about it, to be fair. But we are 1-0 down, which is nowhere where you want to be against a team of this quality. Could we get back into it? You'll see here again, Giggs, you know, just inches wide. Um, this finesse, look at Bubba, he's going fucking mad, but he appreciates the effort. But again, this is just kind of a thing where you have loads of possession, you have loads of chances. They get one or two chances, they hit the post there, that was an unreal shot as well. Um, but that was how it finished, so Stankovic was the man between us here. 1-0 to them, Dennis Law came on in the last couple of minutes, didn't do much. Now, Dennis Law is one of my highest paid players and he's got a massive transfer market value. Um, he doesn't start every game, but I could say that about a couple of players. But speaking of transfers, we are after getting a massive bid on Ryan Giggs. Now Giggs does start the majority of my games on that left flank. And then Ronaldo and Beckham are kind of fighting for that right midfield position. Um, but this is a huge offer for Giggs and it does... I mean, I do want to keep pretty much the main kind of team that I have, the main starting 11, maybe the, the first 15 names um, that I would think of with this squad. I do want to keep them on the actual panel for the first season, um, but that is a massive amount of money, 132 million and clearing his wage as, wages off as well. It would probably mean that I could pretty much buy any other player I want in the classic um pool of players you know you could be thinking about buying maybe a Zidane but maybe maybe buying somebody like Ronaldo up front or Ronaldinho um but look at Keenan Scholes just talking about yeah did you watch I'm a Celebrity last night yeah it was very good but you know from here we're going to be taking on Inter Milan first and then we're going to be taking on Sunderland and this is where I think the classic option file really comes into its own because nothing changes apart from the opposition um I'm still playing the same kind of way I'm using the wings using the space but the lack of quality uh, in Sunderland's team here compared to Inter Milan who are stacked in every position is kind of it's clear to see because I was just putting them under so much pressure but I was finding myself with just that little extra bit of bit of space and eventually it was always going to break in the first 10 minutes to get a chance like that on a on a pretty plate I think I would say yeah pretty much on a plate uh, for Ruud van Nistelrooy that is his clinical best when he is in that little fox in the box hole in the middle now i've gone back to a 4-4-2 here but i was straight away down to a three at the back again because Vidic had to take one for the team gary neville is saying listen don't send him off don't send him off Scholes comes over but it's a little too late because Scholes can't save the ref from sending him off and Vidic is nearly just get out of here Scholes. you're doing more harm than good but i had to probably take him out i'm one nil up i don't know the threat that sunderland are going to pose in this because all the teams are stacked um but from here it was the strangest kind of game because this it was obviously the cup that we were playing so they were going to go for it obviously um you can see they've they've gone straight up even in the 12th minute they've gone straight up in their attack levels you'll see in a second as i pull a brilliant save out of stephanie there the goalkeeper who hasn't had much game time this is his first match playing for us in the cup um, but you can see there that they've gone straight away into attack mode you know with the little red bar and the attack defense levels um so I was kind of thinking to myself, I need a second goal, and I do get a, another tap in from Ruud. It is just, you know, I mean, if you were to literally just pick a goal that Ruud would score, or to pick two goals that he'd score, those are basically what you would see to sum up his entire career at United. Just those tap-ins, fox in the box, you know, opportunist goals, always in the right place. They tried to pull one back with a lovely header there, but it's not to be. Um, but as I said, this was just a weird, weird game, and this was just something that... I don't really know. After coming from playing Inter Milan, maybe I was more clued in. But I just felt like I was going to score on every decent chance that I got. And you can see there again that Rude slots at home. And he will celebrate that with his third goal. The first player in our squad to score a hat-trick. Hopefully it won't be the last. But I was just I, I felt like I could have scored goals for fun. And remember that I'm a man down as well. You know, it was just like something had flipped a switch where it was like, okay, Vidic is down, Vidic has gone off, you're a man down. Even though they did pull one back here, uh, I just never felt under pressure. You know, even when I was kind of in the last couple of minutes, they were, you know, pummeling the goals, they were getting loads of possession, loads of chances, but I always felt I could score on any break that I got. Um, as is evidenced here, Solskjaer comes on with the fresh legs, Bennett can't keep up with him, look at the pace of Solskjaer there. And it is always going to be an easy finish from here. But what about that for a crack and finish into the top corner, in off the post. They always look nicer when they go in off the woodwork. But Solskjaer gets on the mark as well, or gets off the mark, as we get through and navigate through the Classic Cup second round um, is going to be up next. But we will be going into the Championship straight away again for the league. 
and with this episode lads i have kept it fairly short let me know i'm still kind of testing out whether you like longer episodes or shorter episodes or whatever but there is only a couple of highlights including this peach of a goal from david beckham now we have pretty much played sunderland just two seconds ago in the cup so there wasn't many highlights in this episode so i decided to just kind of just show basically the goal that was it that was all that kind of happened it was the most boring match ever and i said there's no point in you know going back and playing sunderland it was the exact same fixture except in the league compared to the cup um and i left a good lot of highlights in from the cup so i just decided to kind of end this video at about the 11 mark so let me know if you want to have like videos between you know 16 17 minutes long or maybe 9 10 minutes long um because it'll just be a case of more highlights more more stuff going on and getting through the series a bit quicker but as you can see there we do unlock the legendary victor um which is the five victories on superstar level ai um so we will be putting it up to legend difficulty i don't know how that's going to affect it but we'll probably wait until the middle part of january so we'll probably wait till the january negotiation period or the transfer window and see what happens there um there will be a couple of changes to the squad there as well i'm going to rotate some some players rotate some quick some kits and upgrade some stuff um but yeah that is pretty much it for episode four of the classic manchester united master league playthrough i hope you're enjoying the series as much as i'm enjoying playing it lads let me know any feedback anything you want to add to this or anything you want me to go into let me know as well with Giggsy or if any of the players you want me to sell let me know what the crack is with that because i'm kind of thinking i want to keep this as you know if i do win something i want to have the nucleus of the team there the current squad that's in the classic option file but i also I also do want to buy somebody like Ronaldo or Shevchenko or somebody like that that I have fond memories of playing Pez with back in the day. And uh, that's what this classic option file is all about. So huge thanks to the Pez Universe classic option file team as usual. Hope you're enjoying the series. Don't forget to like, favorite and subscribe. We will be back with episode 5 pretty soon. And uh, until then, have a good one. Peace. <laughs>